As you probably know, one of the most crucial pieces of tech in your home is something that we take for granted. Well, until it wakes us up in the middle of the night. The humble smoke detector. Most of the time these things are just an annoyance that wake us up at 3 a.m. with that signature beep. But these are so important for our family's safety because one of the scariest things for a homeowner is fire or high CO levels. These humble devices are crucial for keeping your home safe. However, there's one problem with traditional smoke and carbon monoxide detectors. They can only do one thing, sound an alert. This is great if you're at home, but what if you're not? What if you're out and about and your smoke or CO detector goes off? How will you know that there's a problem at your house? That's where today's project comes in. By adding intelligence to your smoke and CO detectors, you can be notified immediately if they're set off, no matter where you are. In today's video, we'll be showing you some ways to easily and affordably add sensors to your smoke and CO detectors. So that way you can have peace of mind knowing that you'll be alerted to any potential dangers in your home, even when you're not there. So just to put everyone at ease, we're not gonna be making our own do-it-yourself smoke detector or doing any modification to our existing smoke detector. Everything we're doing is gonna utilize tools and parts available from the smoke detector manufacturers. Today's project will not work for all smoke detectors, but I think it's the best way to upgrade your existing detectors without throwing them all out. Now I know there are already a few options on the market for detecting your detectors. That just sounds weird. You can either replace all of them with a third-party smoke detector, like a Nest Protect or one of the Z-Wave detectors that are out there. You used to be able to purchase something called a Roost battery that you could place in an existing detector that would replace the nine volt battery and use that for sensing. Then there are sound detection based alerting, like a dedicated device, the Nest Secure or the Alexa equivalent where it uses your existing smart assistance to detect the sound of a smoke detector or the detection built into the WISE cameras. But today we're gonna to do something a little bit different. We're gonna use a system that's already built into a lot of existing detectors, the alarm interconnect. This is the feature that allows one detector to alert and then have the rest of them sound simultaneously. But most vendors make a special relay to tie them into an alarm or fire panel. We're gonna be using that same feature by adding relays, but connecting them to Home Assistant instead. So you may be asking, why do I care about having a smart smoke detector? The first and most obvious is to be notified about an event if you're outside of your house. So say you're not home and your smoke detector goes off. Unless you have a monitored alarm system, no one will know until a neighbor sees or smells smoke. The other scenario would be that you have a babysitter or family member taking care of your kids in the house and they experience a smoke or CO alarm. You'd wanna know about that as soon as possible so you can call and check in or rush home. Now the second reason why you might wanna have intelligent smoke detectors is to kick off an automation. So for example, if a smoke alarm goes off, you may wanna turn off your HVAC system so that you don't circulate smoke throughout the house or fan the flames. You might also wanna start your sprinkler system to prevent the fire from spreading to your neighbor's houses. Or simply just flash your outside lights to let first responders know which house is yours. Also to open garage doors or unlock locks so that way first responders can get in your house quickly. Now we all set up these systems to increase the safety and security of our smart homes. And ultimately in the terrible event of a fire or other disaster, it will help you reduce the overall impact and cost. Now it's great that smart homes can save you money in the event of an emergency, but what about saving you money by preventing an emergency in the first place? Well, that's where today's sponsor comes in. Today's video is sponsored by Lockit. Lockit is a UK based insurance provider. Now you may be wondering why me, someone who is obviously not from the UK is gonna talk to you about insurance only available for UK residents. But just stick with me for a minute because they're doing some really cool things. Lockit is a different type of insurance provider. They're actually ran by a bunch of smart home enthusiasts. This is a group of engineers that built a company to try to shake up the insurance industry. They provide you with discounts on your insurance just because you have a smart home. Right now they're running a groundbreaking smart home study. The purpose of this program is to research the protective benefits of smart home technology. This means they're trying to show that folks with smart home tech truly have safer homes. So Lockit is looking for smart home enthusiasts like you that can help them validate this theory, as well as provide them feedback on their services. To that end, they're looking for folks to join their insider program. If you do enroll in this program, you'll be eligible to join the research study. But the biggest reason to join the Insider program? Free stuff. Participants get rewarded for taking part with free smart tech, like the Ring Video Doorbell version three, a Yale Leak sensor kit, or the Sonic by Hero Labs. Plus everyone gets other member benefits, including a fire extinguisher kit by LifeSafe Technologies, Locket merch, and a completion bonus for staying in the study. Now if that sounds good to you, and you are a UK resident interested in switching insurance providers, head to the link below and see more details and sign up if you're interested. If you're like me and can't sign up, then maybe ask your insurance provider why they don't give you a discount for your smart home. So thank you again to Lockit for sponsoring today's video. All right, so let's take a look at how this project works. So let's talk about what's needed for this project so you can get an idea of what we're gonna do and see if it's something that you wanna try out. Now the first thing you're gonna need is a compatible smoke or carbon monoxide detector. There are two main types of detectors found in most homes battery powered and hardwired. The first are detectors that are just battery powered. These are standalone, meaning each detector operates by itself. 
The second style, hardwired, is becoming required in most new construction homes. These are primarily powered from your home's electrical mains with a battery backup, typically a 9 volt or lithium battery. One distinct advantage of the hardwired versions is they all talk to each other. In my home, if one smoke alarm goes off, they all do. They do this with a center wire called an interconnect. That's where this project comes in. So most major brands of smoke and CO detectors like First Alert and Kitty have relays that can be added to these to either report the status to an alarm or fire panel or add accessible alert methods like strobes or bed shakers. So our second requirement are the detector alarm relays. These are sometimes called smart relays, panel relays, or interconnect relays. So these ones from Kitty allow you to have multiple outputs to use in your project. It has a nine volt output, a normally open, and a normally closed contact. These are powered from the same mains power as the smoke detectors themselves. So that's the secret sauce for this project. We're gonna be adding one or a pair of these relays to our system and then pull that data into Home Assistant using a closed contact device. Now I say a pair of these relays because Kitty, the brand that I have in my home, has a separate relay for smoke and CO. And because mine are combo detectors, you need one of each. So for my combination smoke and CO detectors, there are two different part numbers. The SM120X is the smoke detector relay and it has a black wrap on it. And the CO120X is for the CO side, it has a blue wrap on it. Now these two relays have almost identical wiring diagrams. The only exception is the smoke actually has the nine volt output where the CO does not. So the red, black, and white wires correspond to the interconnect line and neutral respectively. So then you're left with three additional wires. The blue, which is the common for the normally open and closed contact sensors. And then you've got the orange, which is the normally open, and the yellow, which is the normally closed sensor, which are what we're gonna hook up to our next item on the list. So in my original setup, how I did this was take the closed contact output and run it into a modified door and window sensor. Some door and window sensors already have a set of terminals on the main board that you can connect to an external magnetic door switch. Others can be modified by bypassing the read switch. But for today's project, I picked up the new Fabaro Combo DIY module. This freaking tiny device does a ton. It's a Z-Wave Plus device, and I couldn't believe how small this thing is. First and foremost, it can obviously take in two closed contact devices, which is the main thing we're gonna be using today. It can also control two outputs. These are simple relays that can be triggered by the Z-Wave control. It can also take the input from a temperature sensor. If you watched last week's video, we played around with the DHT22 humidity and temperature sensor. You can connect one of those to the sensor input or a number of one wire temperature sensors. Now, if you prefer another communication technology, options would include a Shelly closed contact sensor or a Zigbee closed contact module. So there are a variety of options out there depending on what communications technologies you have in your home. Now, if you want to take the route of this Fabaro device, then you're going to need to have a compliant power supply for your sensor. My Fabaro requires a 9 to 30 volt DC power supply. So I'm going to be using one of these 120 volt AC to 12 volt DC power supplies designed for LEDs. So the next thing we're going to need is a junction box or a work box. Now, this is a requirement here in the US, but I assume it's most anywhere else as well. Now, because we're going to be working with mains power, you're going to need a work box for these relays to live in. This could be a junction box or one of the old or new work boxes. I'm using an old work box to store the relays and the power supply as they all connect into the mains voltage. Plus you need a cover for this box. So in my case, this keeps all the 120 voltage inside of the work box and then we're only gonna be bringing out either sensor cables or DC power. So finally, you're gonna need some sort of brain or smart home system. This solution will of course work with any system or hub that's compatible with your contact sensor. But of course today we're gonna to be using Home Assistant to bring this all together. Because I'm using Z-Wave, I'll be using the Z-Wave JS integration built into Home Assistant with my AOTech Z-Stick and my existing Z-Wave network. Now for the sake of ease, I've got everything laid out in a wiring diagram, which of course I've got here on screen and is available in the blog post attached to this video. So I'm gonna go ahead and move all this stuff back to the workbox and get it all wired in, and then I'll take you through the wiring diagram to show you how I've got everything wired up for myself. Then we'll head over and I'll get into Home Assistant and show you how to set these devices up to show up as smoke or CO detectors, and then we'll do a couple of automation examples pretty quickly. All right, so now that I've got the project installed, it's actually downstairs in my basement in the ceiling next to one of my last smoke detectors in the chain. And if we look at the wiring diagram that I've provided here, you'll see that I have effectively put it in between two smoke detectors. So what I did was I actually ended up splicing off of the three lines from one smoke detector and I brought an extra set of cables into this other box. So everything from this bottom section here is inside of the new work box. So what I've done is I've pulled off the line, the neutral, which is gray here because you can't see white, and then red is the interconnect. So I've brought that into this box and I'm using the those three cables attached to the exact same color on both the smoke detector and the CO detectors 
power inputs. I'm using my 120 volt to 12 volt power converter here to power the Fabaro device. And then I have the negative on the DC output side tied to the two blue wires coming from the relays and also for the ground for the Fabaro. This is important because this is part of the closed contact circuit we're gonna need to actually sense when the smoke detectors go off. I discovered a small typo. So actually I have the normally closed outputs from each of the relays connected into the Fabaro. So I've got the smoke detector, its yellow wire, which is the normally closed, is connected into input one on the Fabaro. And the CO detector is also connected on the yellow pin, connected to pin two on here. So what happens is when, since it's on the normally closed circuit, when the system sets off the smoke detector, it's gonna open up the yellow connection and it's gonna close the connection on the orange circuit. So you can use either one. I've got this set up because it will show me failure. If one of these two devices fails, it should open that circuit up and then I'll see that there's a trouble on there. So it gives me a little extra degree of security. So I do have this wiring diagram on the blog post. It is actually using this Miro app so you can pan and zoom around it. But if you do have questions, feel free to let me know. So once I got everything wired in, I went ahead and paired the Fabaro to my Home Assistant device so I can see all the individual outputs. So we pop over here into Home Assistant, and then I'm in my Z-Wave devices. I'm going down here to the Smart Implant, which is the name of the device. And you'll see on here, I've got the two outputs, the air temperature, and I didn't realize it actually has an embedded temperature sensor. So if you wanted to add additional temperature sensors or temperature and humidity, you can add the DHT or one of the one wire sensors, but it already does have an onboard temperature sensor. Then we've got the two intrusions, which come built in. That's the two inputs, input one and input two. It's got voltage if there's any voltage presence. And then you can also go down through and see all of the different settings that you can change. Now, one of the cool things about one of the later updates with Z-Wave JS is you can click configure here and you can pop in and change all the individual parameters on the Z-Wave device. Now, if you happen to be using this particular device, you wanna change two settings. The first being parameter 20, needs to be set to normally closed alarm input. And parameter 21, which is for the input two, is needs to be set for normally closed. So again, I'm using normally closed. If you're using a normally open circuit, you change it to the normally open alarm input. One thing to note is that when you do that, it's actually going to treat this like something that you want to embed in an alarm panel. So it's gonna tie the inputs to the outputs. So if the inputs are safe, it's gonna turn the output on and vice versa. I believe there is a way to separate these two using a Z-Wave command. I haven't had a chance to explore that, but I do have a link to a post I found for another hub, but the Z-Wave command should work, and that's obviously in the blog post. So first thing I want to do is go in here and change this intrusion from just a generic intrusion. We're going to go to settings. We'll call this one smoke detectors. Change the icon of smoke detector. And we want to change the show as to smoke. And of course, you can change the binary sensor's name, so we'll call this one smoke detector. And then that will refresh, and once it reloads, this will come back with the correct icon. For intrusion two, same thing, CO detectors. And we want to show this as carbon monoxide. Now, if we see, we've got CO detectors and smoke detectors. So that's all we need to do really right now for these two things. You can obviously add these to your dashboards, you probably should. So now that I've added a home assistant, let's jump in and add a couple quick automations. So the first automation that I always recommend is a notification. So if I search for smoke here, I already have an automation that is, is a very basic one. If the smoke detector turns on, so if it's set off, then do something. So in this case, it's gonna send me a mobile notification and also turn on the front lights, which I have disabled right now. But as I mentioned before, this is a great safety feature. So I've got my front lights on a smart switch. They'll turn on and then immediately it'll start pulsing them on and off. This is a great way to alert a neighbor or if emergency services are coming to your house, they can see which one is your house because it's flashing. You could also then set off for example, I could go in here to my Rachio and tell it to start running a program. You could have it do text-to-speech all throughout your house if you wanted to. One thing you do want to probably take note of is if you do use the Home Assistant notification, so through the Home Assistant app, there are functions in there about using the critical alert. And I'm not going to go into great detail in this video because it does take a little bit of configuration, but there are different alarm channels, depending on if you're on iOS or Android, that you can set it where it will either it'll either violate your profiles. So if your phone's on do not disturb, it'll go ahead and break through that and then set off something. Or you can even do text to speech to the phone. So I've got a link here right below to the critical alert documentation from Home Assistant. And if you want to review that and ask me any questions, feel free to do so. But I've got mine set to a high priority and it's going to send it to the alarm stream. So you can actually on Android, which is what I primarily use, you can go into that channel and set a different profile. So different sound or if it vibrates, things like that, you can set a different channel. And it's probably a good idea to go ahead and do that for high alert items. There's also a neat feature in Home Assistant where you can group together notification devices. So if you set up an emergency channel group, you could send one notification to that group and it would text your watch, 
your phone, it would set off text-to-speech, all that sort of stuff. So again, there's a link right here below to that documentation, another option from Home Assistant. So in this case, I will set up one for each. So I have one set up for CO and one set up for smoke, and it will send me a different alert based on which one that is. Also, if you happen to have a service like Noonlight set up, you could use this to trigger off an actual alert straight to your fire department or your you know EMS services or whatever it happens to be. Like I said, I've had this sort of system running for a couple of years now. It so far, you know, knock on wood, I haven't had any fires or smoke events, but it is a nice peace of mind to know if I'm outside of the house and something does go wrong, I will know about it first and I don't have to wait for the house to burn down before anybody notices it, so. All right, so now that everything has been set up, let's go ahead and test the smoke detector setup here. So as you'll see with my smoke detector, all I have to do is hold down the test button for about three to five seconds. And if I continue holding it down, it will in order test the smoke detector and then the CO detector. So you'll hear it actually set off the one I'm on, and then you'll hear the rest of the chain go off indicating that there has been a fire detected. And then you'll notice on my phone, I'll get a pop-up message indicating that Home Assistant sees the smoke detector is going off. Of course, from here, you can have any automation you want. Then immediately after the smoke detector goes off, then my CO detector is tested. So they're tested in order. So to make sure this works, I, I would say once every six months or anytime you do a major update, you should probably go through and test this by setting off your test on your smoke detector and making sure Home Assistant can see that. That way you have a peace of mind knowing that these detectors are being monitored and you can kick off any sort of automation you want. So. There we go, everything's been set up, everything's functional, and now we have an extra layer of security at our house. So if you do come up with a clever automation to use this sort of thing with, whether you have something like a Nest Protect or you're using the Wise sensors or another third-party product, feel free to leave in the description below how you use a automation for your smoke detectors, whether you have it have an emergency exit path where certain lights come on to show you where to go, you turn all your lights red, you set up a text-to-speech notification. So if you set anything like that, please let me know. I like to know what other things I can add into my system. As you can see here, this is just the first step and you can add infinite automation behind that. So again, I wanna thank Lockit for sponsoring today's video. They're hopefully one of my first long-term sponsors and you should be seeing more about them here in the next coming months. So what happens if you run into a problem with this project? Well, you can always leave me a comment down in the description where I'll try to answer your question or join our Discord server. I have many users jump on here to simply ask a question or if they get stuck somewhere. So don't be afraid to hop on and explore, even if you're a Discord newbie. Now if this video piqued your interest and you'd like to check out some more of my Home Assistant projects, you can click on this playlist right here. And if you haven't already, please make sure you subscribe to the channel by clicking our logo right here. Thanks again, Happy New Year, and I'll see you in more future videos this year.